Welcome back to week four, wherein we are going to talk more about the internal processes that are happening in the Earth. And in particular, what we are going to talk about now is some of the evidence that exists to support the theory of plate tectonics. So what kind of things exist? Well, um, Alfred Wegener, who is the kind of the father of plate tectonics, what he discovered uh, and was looking at are things like continental fit, looking at geologic structures, rocks, fossils um, that exist in very different locations but are very similar to one another. Uh, more recent things uh, that are looked at are uh, the occurrence of volcanoes and earthquakes, the age of the seafloor, and then Harry Hess was looking at magnetism of the seafloor as well as uh, seafloor features as well. So Alfred Wegener had this idea that continents are like puzzle pieces and they all once fit together. And here you see two pictures, the picture on the left showing you what's happened uh, from present day in the bottom and then moving backwards in time to the Permian when we had all of the continents once together in this uh, puzzle fit together to form Pangaea about 225 million years ago. And this is what Alfred Wegener was proposing that all the continents were once fit together, uh, looking at the shapes of the edges of the continents, as well as some of the other things we'll look at in the next few slides. And this other picture over here, kind of checker checkerboard pattern, uh, shows uh, how the continents fit together using the continental shelf which is actually the, uh, where the continental crust ends and the oceanic crust begins. You can see they fit together pretty well. There's a few of the grays and black areas on here that show places where there's either some overlap or there's gaps. And that's due to erosion or deposition of material. So some of the other things that Alfred Wegener used to piece these continents back together are things like geologic structures. You can see it in this top picture, shaded brown areas are showing you different mountain ranges that were formed when all these continents collided into one another. And once they ripped apart, these mountain ranges such as the Appalachian Mountains in uh, the eastern side of the country match up to mountains that we see over in Europe. We see rocks that exist in Maine, and we also see them in parts of Africa and Europe as well. So we see things that are identical, that are now separated by a huge ocean. Uh, we also can look at fossils as well. And uh, some of the fossils that Wegener looked at are things like the Lystrosaurus, which is an organism that is living on land. It's not going to swim across a huge ocean. We see that brown range stretching from Africa to India to Antarctica, these three Continents are very, very far away from one another now. It's very unlikely that this organism was able to travel that distance. And then we see things like the mesosaur, which is a freshwater organism that we see in the, the southern tips of Africa and South America, now separated by a huge ocean as well. So Alfred Wegener, looking at some of these features like continental fit, structures, rocks, and fossils. And poor Alfred Wegener, he came up with this idea that the continents were once fitting together, but people didn't believe him and, and support his theory because he couldn't come up with the driving force, what happens to create uh, this motion of the plates. He didn't have a good explanation, so people said, hey, well, if you can't explain it, how do we know it's actually happening? It wasn't until later on with Harry Hess and his discoveries that we were actually able to figure out what is actually happening. And you guys are going to watch a video this week as well that um, is uh, by Bill Nye, the science guy, one of my favorites. And um, he's going to talk to you about Harry Hess and some of the, the things that he actually did to help this theory of plate tectonics. So some of the other things that we use, um, earthquakes and volcanoes. Here's a screenshot of the USGS real-time worldwide earthquakes. Um, you can see um, this is just in the last week. We get a nice pattern around the Pacific Ocean, right along the Ring of Fire. Lots of earthquakes there. The yellows are within the last week. Blues are in the last day. Reds are in the last 
hour. So you can see some over in the Caribbean there. Uh, so this is from the USGS. You can also look at the IRIS real-time seismic monitoring as well. And I'll show you those websites here is IRIS. Cool website, lots of interesting information. It's the Incorporated Research Institutions for Seismology. Great little videos that we're actually going to watch when we talk about the types of boundaries. And here's this seismic monitor page. And this one actually goes further back. It actually goes in the last five years in purple. Two weeks in yellow and then orange is yesterday and reds are today. The relative size of those circles correspond to the magnitude of the size of those earthquakes. So you can see those tend to form a pattern around the world. And those are occurring along those plate boundaries. And we can also look at volcanoes as well. And here's the uh, USGS earthquake map here. Real time, you can zoom to different areas to see what happened where. And here are the volcanoes.usgs.gov website. You can see um, volcanoes that exist in this country and around the world, and then actually tell you if they're active or not, or if they're being watched. As you can see in the um, orange triangles, that's where there's actually something happening right now, which is pretty cool. And you guys can explore that as well. So that we see volcanoes spreading along those those boundaries as well as earthquakes following those plate boundaries as well. So that's another example of um, things that we look at uh, to help us figure out where those boundaries are and to help prove that they actually exist. We also look can see things like the magnetism of the oceanic crust and that um, changes through time. The Earth's magnetic field is dynamic. It, fluctuates. We have times where we have normal polarity, which you can see in this picture here where the North Pole is the North Pole, and then we have times where it flip-flops, and we actually have it reversed, where your compass, the south arrow, would port point north um, instead. And also that magnetic field changes in strength as well, and that it gets recorded in the rocks that are forming at these divergent plate boundaries. And this is what Harry Hess was looking at. Um, so what happens, I have a cool little video to show you. If we go to this Ocean Explorer NOAA website, see some descriptions of sea floor spreading activity. So this is where we have divergent plate boundary. So here, um, can't totally fit it all on the screen, but we can come pretty close. So what you can see here is a divergent plate boundary or two plates are moving away from one another and in the center this is where we have new crust being formed we have um, material erupted onto the surface and as that materials erupt on the surface it's liquid the magnetic minerals in that rock can take on the polarity and the strength of the magnetic field of the earth at that time once that rock cools that polarity is now frozen in the rocks. And because this is an active divergent boundary, those two, uh, that material is now going to be ripped apart, ripped in half, and pulled away from the center. And so that's what we see here, zero age in the middle, where we have new crust formed. And then we go out um, from the center, we have one million year, two million, then three, kind of a mirror image of one another on either side, because we're actively pulling this stuff apart and pulling it away from each other. So this is our map view with our divergent boundary. We can scroll this um, bar over and we can see um, the um, stripes that we see, the magnetic minerals that are present. And then our map view of what the surface would look like. So um, we see zero regular po polarity and then we see mirror images of this polarity pattern as you move out from the center because these are actively being pulled away from one another. So make sure you watch this the video of um, Bill Nye describing Harry Hess and his discoveries. It's pretty interesting. One last thing that we can actually look at to help us um, prove that this is it's the seafloor is actually spreading is by looking at the age of the rocks. And we can do that through 
using ma magnetic polarity can be one way, but also looking at the sediments that build up on the ocean floor and actually figuring out how old they are. Here's a map showing you uh, gray areas as the continents and then the age of the seafloor, the reds being very young, the blues being much older. You can see that uh, along those divergent plate boundaries, like in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, also in the Pacific Ocean, what we see is very young rock right at the very center where things are actively pulling away from each other and creating new crust. And as we move further and further away from that plate boundary, the older and older the rocks get, um, and the more and more sediment that gets built up on those uh, bits of crust. So another thing we can use are satellites and GPS units. So satellites are um, in orbit around the Earth. They can uh, connect to GPS points on the Earth's surface and actually measure how far continents have moved and also how fast they're moving. So we can record that data with more accuracy with this new technology that we have. So well, that's some of the evidence that exists to support this theory. Uh, next, we'll come back and talk about the different plate boundaries that exist.